Guys, the past few weeks, the crypto market has been absolutely exploding and altcoins have been exploding as well. Currently, we are seeing Dino altcoins pump massively. I'm looking for two major long positions on both Litecoin and Polkadot, which are both showing signs of my favorite continuation structure. In today's video, I will be providing you guys with the exact trading ideas, both the explanation part, but also the exact execution part. So let's start off with the higher time frame context on Litecoin. What we can see over here is that Litecoin is, as we speak, breaking out of a multi-year reaccumulation range. And what I really like about the breakout that we are currently seeing is the movement that we saw before the breakout actually happened. Because what we can see over here at the bottom of the range is that we have been seeing a major major sweep of a major liquidity pool over here we swept major liquidity beneath these equal lows over here after sweeping the liquidity we got the slow grind towards the upside that resulted into expansion towards higher targets now what we can see is that the last three day candle before the current one the candle over here closed above this significant high how is this a significant high? Because when we analyze the structure over here on the three day time frame, is that we had a uptrend over here with higher highs and then higher lows. And then this higher high over here brought us to the lower low over here compared to this low that brought us to that higher high. And therefore, this high became a significant high to break, which strengthens the breakout out of this reaccumulation range. Now we know that once these reaccumulation ranges break out that we can target some buy side liquidity. And we can see that all of these highs that we're lining up over here are a major draw on liquidity for the price of Litecoin. And that will be my main liquidity objective. So if you mark out the second to highest high, which is this high over here, we always map out the second to highest high rather than the highest high. We have a trigger to start looking for long positions. We have our main liquidity objective to look for a target. Now, all we need is an intraday setup, an intraday trigger, and an intraday execution to actually make profits. So now that we understand the higher time frame context, I start looking at the intraday price section in order to start finding a potential trigger to start looking for longs. Now, what we can see over here is some very, very interesting price action, in my opinion. Because what we were seeing over here is that the price of Litecoin was getting this grind towards the upside. And what we were seeing during this grind towards the upside is that we were breaking through this insignificant high and then we were also breaking through this insignificant high. Now, this last push to the upside was a very aggressive one. Guys, get into the mind of the retail trader. What happens when we break through those previous highs? People start FOMOing into long positions over here or long positions upon this push towards the upside over here, targeting higher levels whenever they see strength like this. Where are those people going to place their stop loss? In Indeed, they're placing their stop loss beneath the low over here or beneath the low over here. Otherwise, they would be placing their stop loss all the way at the low over here, obviously. But if they use this low to cover their stop loss, the RR of their long position decreases and therefore they're not using this low, but they're using the first two lows that I was mapping out. Because in that case, they have a decent RR trade for their long position and that low will be used as the invalidation, which means that by getting this push to the upside and by getting this push to the upside price was engineering lots of liquidity beneath the two lows over here then obviously price is always attracted to that liquidity pool we purge the first liquidity pool followed by a bounce this bounce is engineering even more liquidity beneath the low over here because people see a sweep of liquidity followed by a strong bounce so once again they FOMO into long positions, engineering even more liquidity over here. Now, Smart Money is using that liquidity to fill their order. So we get another push to the upside, purge that liquidity pool once, purge that liquidity pool twice over here, and then we get a push to the upside. Guys, this is my favorite continuation structure. Slow grind to the upside, followed by a flush, trade back above that high, and then we continue to the upside. I've made a separate YouTube video on this topic, guys. I will leave the link to that YouTube video in the description down below. So after watching today's YouTube video and figuring out what trades I'm taking on both Litecoin and Polkadot, make sure to check out that YouTube video as well to educate you guys on my favorite continuation structure, which is currently being developed on both Polkadot and on Litecoin. 
Now, since price is also trading back above this high, and by getting that valid break of structure after this high probability liquidity sweep over here, I have myself a clean trigger to start looking for longs on Litecoin. I have my invalidation beneath the low over here that started this impulse to the upside that gave us a break of structure. Now we start looking at the execution. And what I really like is the current structure that we are actually currently seeing on Litecoin because we saw this most recent push to the upside over here. What happened while we were getting the push to the upside is that we broke through this high and that we were breaking through this high. We were actually swing failing that second high. By doing this, once again, price was engineering liquidity beneath the lows over here, which price is currently mitigating. So full transparency, I have entered my first long entry right over here for the price of Litecoin. First entry over here, the invalidation is clear. It's the low over here. And now we start looking at a second entry with the same invalidation in order that we get a bigger flush. Now, when I analyze the structure over here, understand guys, the most important thing when we start looking at the execution for a trade is that we always, and I mean always, want to enter where other people are getting stopped out. So it's very simple. You simply analyze the price section from the past. We figure out what retail is doing based off the previous price section. And therefore we figure out where they are placing their stops. We are using them stops to execute our own positions. Now in this case, what I can see is once again, structure being developed to the upside. This most recent push was giving us a valid break of structure over here, but more locally over here, this was a fake break of structure. Therefore, we are engineering some liquidity beneath the low over here. And I'll be using that liquidity to fill my second entry in case that we get a bigger dump to the downside with the same invalidation and the same take profit target. So eventually the setup for Litecoin looks something like this guys. With a target that we determined at the beginning of the video, we have our favorite continuation structure after determining the higher time frame trend and the higher time frame context. You always start at the higher time frame context and then we move to the lower time frame to start looking at potential triggers and at the potential executions for our trading ideas based off that higher time frame context. Now let's move over to the next trading idea, which is a long position on Polkadot. Once again, guys, let's start off by mapping out the higher time frame context. And guys, I've been talking about this range on Polkadot for a long, long time, and I've been publicly calling a bounce over here. And whenever we saw the bounce from the range lows, as I've told you guys multiple times on Twitter and in my Discord server, we've been seeing a 184.66% bounce. Now what we are currently seeing is a strong bounce from the mid range area. And that is something that is definitely triggering a potential long idea because we know that as long as we hold the range low, and as long as we find support around the mid range after we reclaim it, technically speaking, we should be targeting the liquidity pool around that range high, which straight away gives us a very clear drawn liquidity and a very clear liquidity objective right over here for a potential long position around $11.88.9. So once again, the higher time frame context is super, super clear. In that case, we start looking at the lower time frame context to analyze if we can find a potential trigger and a potential execution for a long position. Now we start doing that by decrypting the price section that has been taking place over here. And if price action from the past is providing us with clear ideas and a clear trigger to start looking for an execution of a long, that's when we engage. And when I look at this price action, I absolutely love it, guys. Because what we are seeing over here is that we were breaking through the previous high over here with a very aggressive push. Once again, people get trapped into breakout longs because they're fucking impatient, guys. We need to be patient because these people that open up breakout longs due to these fake break of structures, they're impatient and they always get wrecked. Once again, they got wrecked because they had their stop loss over here and they got stopped out. Then we saw a slow grind to the upside right over here. That slow grind to the upside, once again, what was it doing, guys? Engineering liquidity beneath the low over here and beneath the low over here. How was it engineering? Because the highs that we break through are insignificant highs to break. Why are those highs insignificant? Because they didn't, didn't bring us to new lows. They only brought us to higher lows and then they made a higher high. Highs are only significant if they bring us to lower lows compared to the low that brought us to that high. Lows are only significant 
If they bring us to higher highs compared to the high, they brought us to that low. Write it down, remember it, never ever forget it. It's a difference between a valid and invalid break of structure. Therefore, engineering liquidity to the downside, once again, we mitigate that liquidity pool, we get a push to the upside, and we break structure right over here. Now, by breaking structure, we first off find an invalidation over here. But in my opinion, when we analyze the target over here and we analyze our invalidation over here, it's not worth the RR. Because if I start looking for longs now on Polkadot with my invalidation over here, targeting at range high, I only get an RR of one. It's not worth it. With my win rate, I need to target an RR of at least 1.7. That means that I need a new and more local trigger. But lucky for us, we indeed got one. Because what we can see is that over here, I'm once again witnessing slow grind to the upside, price constantly making higher highs and higher lows. And what happens after the slow grind? We are engineering liquidity to the downside beneath all of those lows. Price gets an aggressive push to the downside right over here, mitigates the liquidity pool, and we trade back above that high. Once again, guys, favorite continuation structure. I made a YouTube video on it, and I will link you guys to the YouTube video after you have watched the current one. So that means that I found a tighter invalidation for Polkadot. I found a new trigger for Polkadot by getting this value break of structure as well. The target remains the same. So now I start looking at executions. And I always want to execute where other people are getting stopped out. Once again, more locally, fake break of structure, fake break of structure. Engineering liquidity over here, which we have already taken out. And there's some more liquidity over here, which means that once we start taking out this low, I'll be interested in executing longs on Polkadot and then I can also see that we have some more liquidity resting beneath this wick over here. Very simple. Higher time frame context, lower time frame triggers, lower time frame execution. So guys, eventually the setup on Polkadot looks something like this. First entry close to being hit, second entry is a little further away to increase the RR in case that we get a bigger dump. Let me know if you guys like videos like this. If you guys do have any questions after watching today's video, make sure to let me know in the comments down below. Go and make sure that you check out the YouTube video on continuation structures right over here, right now. Leave a like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys at the next video. Ciao, ciao.